What's up, Epic Seven? It's March, and we have the new expeditions out. This time around, we're facing fire, dark, and ice. This is my favorite rotation because these are the reforged mats and mod gems I need the most. Now, I've done several videos on how to beat these, but Epic Seven's made some changes to the expedition. They've decreased the amount of times we need to go in to complete them by boosting the amount of rewards you get per run. And the end result was kind of unexpected. We are winding up with people getting the expeditions done much quicker. And then as the month wanes on, people aren't hitting them anymore. And people are finding it harder and harder to complete their uh, monthly seasonal board, especially if they start late. So more so than ever, I think it's really important to be able to have a team that full clears. So this time around, we're going to run teams that are very, very specifically designed to beat these as fast as possible and give you conservation of gear. First, let's talk about the Dark Expedition. This team is the fastest Dark Expedition team I could find, and it gives you really good conservation of gear in the sense that we will reuse a lot of these units over and over again. First, let's talk about the man himself, Brieg. Now, you don't have to put that much damage on Brieg, but he does hit a lot and it adds up. So although mine's overtuned quite a bit, I do think you want damage on your Brieg. The pen set is completely optional because defense break will be on the targets almost the entire time. So you don't get a great deal of advantage out of pen, but it will give you more damage than not having pen. Round 180 speed is a good target for him. Now you'll notice my Brieg only has 70 crit chance. He gets plus 15 from the um, perception passive. Normally I run him on Wings of Light and Shadow for the other 15, but in this case I'm running him on Sword of Azera, and that's because the Dark Expedition hits so darn hard. When Dark Expedition's not on rotation, I'll switch him back to Wings just to get a little bit more damage and a little bit faster clear, but I strongly recommend you run Sword of Azera for the Dark Expedition just to create consistency. You can pick up that artifact in the Hall of Trials shop. Next we'll talk about Tamarin. Tamarin is really overtuned for this. You need 100 effect resistance to be immune to the cannon's skill cooldown reduction. So really, 100 is all you need. Mine has a 200 effect resistance so that I can easily use her in a Nightmare Raid. You'll also only need 85% effectiveness. Mine is at 105, again, for Nightmare Raid. Build her as fast as you can while maintaining a little bit of tankiness. I wouldn't go much thinner than my Tamarin currently is, or you might have trouble with her surviving, especially in some of the other expeditions we're going to do. But um, you can easily run her at 130 effect resistance and then slap Bastion of Hope on her when you need to do Nightmare Queen. You really don't need to min-max these stats quite as heavily as I have. I do prefer Maga Horus Tome on her for the expeditions, however, because cycling her is key to moving the fights along very quickly, both with the attack buffs and the CR pushing and the dual attacks. Next is Camilla, a slight departure from my old rage set Camilla. I've built her on speed. Now you do want to have 85% effectiveness on Camilla because it's important she lands her defense breaks. Um, the damage isn't that critical. Every little bit helps. So, you know, do give her the crit chance and the crit damage, but I really like this speed point for Camilla. It lets her cycle quickly, and that helps push our DPS around because our DPS being Commander Lorena, CR pushes herself. Now, if you don't have Betty Maru's Tachi, that's okay. If you have a plus 31, it's ideal, but plus 15 works fine. If you don't have Tachi, it's okay. You can rely on Tamarin for the attack buff, and it still works out, but... Uh, Tachi is by far and away the best in slot, and it will speed the fights up considerably overrunning it with any other random artifact other than Tachi. And finally, the DPS for this, we are going to run Commander Lorena. Now, you could run Luna, you could run Landy, you could run ML Landy, you could even run Top Model Lulica. In fact, Fire Sermia is probably one of the best for this, but... I'm trying to conserve the gear, because not everybody has 10,000 Rage sets laying around like I do. So, we're going to run Commander Lorena on a Rage pen build, standard PvE Commander Lorena. All you need to worry about is damage. Attack, crit chance, crit damage. Nothing else matters. She doesn't need speed, she doesn't need effectiveness, she doesn't need 
tanking us. I put her on Our Beautiful Seasons for additional damage. If you don't have Our Beautiful Seasons, you can run her on um, Ancient Sheath for 16% damage when she does her S1s. At the start of the fight, you want to make sure that Camilla's skills are turned off. Camilla's skills being turned off because she only needs to do her S1, and she will get the attack buff from Benny Mars Tachi if you have it, and from Tamarin when she eventually S2s if you don't. That's part of why you want your Tam to be fast and to be on Magahar's Tome to see our pusher. Alternate to Magahar's Tome is you could run on Prophetic Candlestick. That will also cycle Tam's skills pretty quickly. We did not proc Tachi on our free-to-play artifact, so we didn't push up Camilla, so we're going to miss out on one last attack, but that's okay. Got the Tachi that time, and now we're starting to cycle our, our Commando Lurina pretty quickly. Briggs barriers really, really help in dealing with the electrocution skill, so I do recommend you mola your S2 on Brieg if you're having trouble with survivability. The thickness of the barriers will help deal with the um, pop damage you get from the electrocution. Tamarin pushes up an attack buff, so we if we didn't have Benny Mars Tachi, we only lost maybe three dual attacks with Camilla. It's not that big of a deal. It's perfectly fine to run Camilla without Tachi if you don't have it, but... Man, if you do, it is best in slot. You see how low Briggs health got there? This is why I really feel like you want to have Sword of Azera on Briggs for this fight. Any of the other fights, you could swap out to Wings of Light and Shadow. I'm not a big fan of swapping my artifacts around. I only run them on Wings when Dark Expedition is not up. Anytime Dark is up, Briggs goes back on uh, Sword of Azera. But uh, if there is no Dark, Wings of Light and Shadow... We'll just make these fights even faster. And there is the halfway point, and the Gigantus has not used his secondary jump skill yet, so we're moving along pretty well here. Camilla's attack buff just wore off, but because Tamarin's cycling is so quick, she is ready to put the attack buff back on. And that's why a free-to-play Benny's Maratachi is also perfectly fine, because when it doesn't proc, you probably have attack buff from Tamarin anyway. Now, you could turn off Commando Lorena skills for this and get a little bit more CR push, but her S3 hits so darn hard, I like leaving it on for that extra damage. And once again... There's a whole host of DPS units. I think probably Sermia, especially on her S1EE and with her ability to use her S2 for greater attack buff to turn off the electrocution. That team is probably more consistent than this one, maybe even faster, but I really wanted to use as few units as possible this rotation to make it easier to gear. And there we go, two minutes and 48 seconds. Under a three minute run for G Destructive Gigantus, which was traditionally one of the slowest ones, and several rounds away from the end of the fight. So, a very stable, reliable team. I don't think I've had it not full clear yet. So, speaking of full clear and fast, let's jump into the fire team. Does this team look familiar? It should. It's the same team we used for the Dark Expedition. Literally the same. Nothing has changed. All the stats are the same. But for those of you who are just jumping to this fight, we'll go ahead and go over these stats one more time. Now, you don't have to put that much damage on Brieg, but he does hit a lot and it adds up. So although mine's overtuned quite a bit, I do think you want damage on your Brieg. The pen set is completely optional because defense break will be on the targets almost the entire time. So you don't get a great deal of advantage out of pen, but it will give you more damage than not having pen. Round 180 speed is a good target for him. Now, you'll notice my Brieg only has 70 crit chance. He gets plus 15 from the um, perception passive. Normally, I run him on Wings of Light and Shadow for the other 15, but in this case, I'm running him on Sword of Azera, and that's because the Dark Expedition hits so darn hard. When Dark Expedition is not on rotation, I'll switch him back to Wings just to get a little bit more damage and a little bit faster clear, but I strongly recommend you run Sword of Azera for the Dark Expedition just to create consistency. You can pick up that artifact in the Hall of Trials shop. Next, we'll talk about Tamarin. 
Tamarin is really overtuned for this. You need 100 effect resistance to be immune to the cannon's skill cooldown reduction. So really, 100 is all you need. Mine has a 200 effect resistance so that I can easily use her in a Nightmare Raid. You'll also only need 85% effectiveness. Mine is at 105, again, for Nightmare Raid. Build her as fast as you can while maintaining a little bit of tankiness. I wouldn't go much thinner than my Tamarin currently is, or you might have trouble with her surviving, especially in some of the other expeditions we're going to do. But um, you can easily run her at 130 effect resistance and then slap Bastion of Hope on her when you need to do Nightmare Queen. You really don't need to min-max these stats quite as heavily as I have. I do prefer Magahara's Tome on her for the expeditions, however, because cycling her is key to moving the fights along very quickly, both with the attack buffs and the CR pushing and the dual attacks. Next is Camilla, a slight departure from my old Rage Set Camilla. I've built her on speed. Now you do want to have 85% effectiveness on Camilla because it's important she lands her defense breaks. Um, the damage isn't that critical. Every little bit helps. So, you know, do give her the crit chance and the crit damage. But I really like this speed point for Camilla. It lets her cycle quickly and that helps push our DPS around because our DPS being Commander Lorena, CR pushes herself. Now, if you don't have Benny Maru's Tachi, that's okay. If you have a plus 31, it's ideal, but plus 15 works fine. If you don't have Tachi, it's okay. You can rely on Tamarin for the attack buff, and it still works out. But uh, Tachi is by far and away the best in slot, and it will speed the fights up considerably overrunning it with any other random artifact other than Tachi. And finally, the DPS for this, we are going to run Commander Lorena. Now, you could run Luna, you could run Landy, you could run ML Landy, you could even run Top Model Lulica. In fact, Fire Sermia is probably one of the best for this, but I'm trying to conserve the gear, because not everybody has 10,000 Rage sets laying around like I do. So, we're going to run Commander Lorena on a Rage pen build, standard PvE Commander Lorena. All you need to worry about is damage. Attack, crit chance, crit damage. Nothing else matters. She doesn't need speed. She doesn't need effectiveness. She doesn't need tankiness. I put her on Our Beautiful Seasons for additional damage. If you don't have Our Beautiful Seasons, you can run her on um, Ancient Sheath for 16% damage when she does her S1s. Much like the Destructive Gigantus fight, we start the fight with Camilla's skills off. Now, if you can get a defense break out of one of these first few hits, either off of Camilla or off of Breeg, it makes this so, so fast. So we had a 50% chance on Camilla, which we missed, but Breeg stuck the defense break and the slow. You don't have to worry about that effect resistance on uh, Camilla anymore because look at Commander Lorena go, just cycling and cycling and cycling until you've burned your way all the way through the silence phase and you've done 350k damage before the or before the Ferris has even taken a second turn. In fact, we're gonna do a lot more than that. Look at the cycling on Commander Lorena. Every dual attack, every S1, pushing Commander Lorena up and down the board. 638k damage. Before the Ferris takes its second attack, we've killed a third of the HP bar. re-establishing the defense break or not re-establishing it but just getting it back up to two turns not that it matters we are crushing this this is why i like having her s3 stay on that is a cool 83k damage you lose the cr push but it's almost uh two hits worth of damage in one hit Tamarin pushing everybody up, getting that attack buff on to Camilla. For those of you who don't have Benny Mars Tachi, you can just rely on Tamarin for your attack buff and put Camilla on any other artifact. You maybe won't clear quite as fast, but it will still full clear. Those slow debuffs are a little bit disappointing, but that will happen. It'll... It'll clear off in time because, I mean, look at this. The Ferris hasn't done his second attack yet. He's actually a whole turn away from his second attack. You'll notice underneath of his skill at the top, 
That little white uh, R for ultimate skill ready is not even lit up. 1.5 million. Next round, Ferris does his jump attack. That's the halfway point. And we're already at 1.5 million. One point six million. One point seven million. Man, if we had a uh, proc Benny Mars Tachi there. There you go. One point eight million before the fifty percent mark. We could have killed this guy twice in one entry. So that is a fantastic, fast, clean team. There's a lot of alternatives you could use. Uh, Luna is a really good alternative to Commander Lorena there. You get the elemental advantage, but C. Lorena is just so wicked fast with their cycling. Let's move on to the water team. The water team is very similar to the other teams in that we are going to continue to use Brig and Tamarin. That's right, Fire Tamarin on the water boss. Now, you don't have to put that much damage on Brig, but he does hit a lot and it adds up. So although mine's overtuned quite a bit, I do think you want damage on your Brig. The pen set is completely optional because defense break will be on the targets almost the entire time. So you don't get a great deal of advantage out of pen, but it will give you more damage than not having pen. Round 180 speed is a good target for him. Now you'll notice my Brig only has 70 crit chance. He gets plus 15 from the um, perception passive. Normally I run him on Wings of Light and Shadow for the other 15, but in this case I'm running him on Sword of Azera, and that's because the Dark Expedition hits so darn hard. When Dark Expedition is not on rotation, I'll switch him back to Wings just to get a little bit more damage and a little bit faster clear, but I strongly recommend you run Sword of Azera for the Dark Expedition just to create consistency. You can pick up that artifact in the Hall of Trials shop. Next we'll talk about Tamarin. Tamarin is really overtuned for this. You need 100 effect resistance to be immune to the cannon's skill cooldown reduction. So really, 100 is all you need. Mine has a 200 effect resistance so that I can easily use her in a Nightmare Raid. You'll also only need 85% effectiveness. Mine is at 105, again, for Nightmare Raid. Build her as fast as you can while maintaining a little bit of tankiness. I wouldn't go much thinner than my Tamarin currently is, or you might have trouble with her surviving, especially in some of the other expeditions we're going to do. But um, you can easily run her at 130 effect resistance and then slap Bastion of Hope on her when you need to do Nightmare Queen. You really don't need to min-max these stats quite as heavily as I have. I do prefer Magahara's Tome on her for the expeditions, however, because cycling her is key to moving the fights along very quickly, both with the attack buffs and the CR pushing and the dual attacks. Now the third unit on the team is going to be Lilka. Lilka is going to help us overcome the um, exhaustion phase. You want 85% effectiveness on Lilka because she has got slow, she has got target, she has got defense break, she's loaded with debuffs, we want to make sure she has the best chance to stick them. And when I say she has target, she has it in the form of Song of Stars. Now, if you don't have a plus 30 Song of Stars, who cares? She will take enough turns. Run plus 15 Song of Stars. If you don't have Song of Stars at all, just put a damage boosting artifact on her. It will work just fine. Song of Stars is really nice to make this a lot faster, but it's not, ne but it's not necessary for a full clear. Now for our damage dealer, we're going to use Ram. I know, she's a collab unit. She was a free collab unit if you don't have Ram. Check the link in the description of the video for a team that uses Sid instead of Ram. Works just, works pretty well, but you know, this one is much cleaner. So if you have Ram, use Ram. Ram gives herself greater attack buff and that's brilliant because the constant attack boosting of Lilka and Tam means that you don't really ever run out of greater attack buff through the whole fight. So she hits like a truck, especially with the Kaladra artifact because the Symmachus, I don't think at any point in time it won't have a debuff. So Kaladra is really good for that 30% extra damage. Pen set again is optional. If you can't build her with pen set, don't bother. Just stick a crit set on her and go crazy. I couldn't make her work out with a pen set. With defense break, it's not that big of a deal. 
The effectiveness, she has a defense break on her S1, or on her S3, and an attack down on her S1. Those are nice, but they aren't so important that I bothered pushing it to 85. I wanted the damage on her more than anything. Now, the important thing is that she's slow. You notice her position on the CR bar. She needs to be 35% or lower on the CR bar to get the full push out of Lilka. If you notice your Lilka is not pushing her all the way, slow your ram down. I, th I think you want her to be below 125 speed. If she's faster than 120, 125, Loka may not be able to see our pusher all the way to the front of the line. So that's a change for you guys. You want to make sure your unit is slow. Now you notice Ram gave herself that greater attack buff. When Loka attacked, it extended the greater attack buff. Nice dual attack there. So we're already at 518k damage. And look at the boss's HP bar. We're nowhere near the 50% mark at 600k damage. Tamarin's going to transform. Her S2 gives everybody an attack buff, which will once again extend the greater attack buff on Ram, making sure we do peak damage. We reestablish target. Unfortunately, we don't have a defense break. Oh, wait. Brieg is ready to go. Can he give us a defense break? Nope, nope. His skill wasn't quite ready yet. But Lilka's S1 has a defense break on it. Now we're doing maximum damage again with target and defense break. And you know, if we had missed it, this skill right here, this is another defense break from Brieg and the slow debuff. This is going to hit so hard. 200k damage in one hit. Okay, the white R is underneath the boss's main skill. That means we're approaching the halfway point. The boss's next attack is going to be his jump skill. But look at our score. We are 1.1 million. We are so far past the halfway point. Hey, hey, and Tam is going to be... Uh, Getting a push up again. Another solid hit from Ram. Pushed Ram up again. Another smack. That's a little unfortunate, right? Lilka pushed Ram right before she got um, exhausted. And that's another reason why you want your Loka to be pretty fast, so that you will have the ability to cycle Loka around. Now, Loka used her S3 skill. Tam pushes everybody up 50%. I think Loka's S2 should be ready this round. Nope. Man, this guy would be dead now if the timing hadn't been just a little bit off on Loka. But uh, she will finish the push here. And Ram's back in play. That cost us about maybe 10 seconds. The, the poor timing there. Usually this clears in under 3 minutes. But I think we're going to be right at the 3 minute mark here. Car gets back up. Breeg's got to do his thing. Yeah, we just slid a little over the 3 minute mark. Usually this is under 2 minutes. There's just a little bit of RNG with the timing of... Lilka's S, uh, S2 skill to push Ram up. But hey, it is still a very solid, easy speed clear team. I hope these teams help you out. My goal wasn't to show free to play this time around or to show the uh, easiest to gear team. My goal is to show the fastest team. Fastest and most reliable is the order of the day. This way you can always clear your own expeditions. And if you want to farm, reforge mats and farm mod boxes, under three minute runs for every single team and never worrying about them fail. It's just such a great quality of life. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you out. If you uh, don't have some of these units or don't have some of these artifacts, check the link in the description for alternative videos and uh, make sure you join my Discord. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great one, everybody.